not going to make this very long. I'll give everybody to ask any questions that they need. Um, but I'll, what I'll do here is I'll go over a quick little plan how I how I how I get myself ready for the night, and then how, sorry how I get myself ready uh, for for tomorrow morning. Everything that I look at, obviously, you can see me do it the night before. Um, but I'll go into a little bit more in detail here of, of, of some of the things that I'm looking for and uh, how I really construct these plans for the night before. So um, already looking at uh, slash, I'll start here on slash yes, and uh, I'll start here on the uh, the four hour chart. And so last night, if you remember, you remember me talking about the four hour chart last night, and uh, hopefully. Maybe some of you caught this, but uh, hopefully you can remember how I talked about look, looking for that to just swoop, looking for that to just, that four hour buy trigger right there, and then obviously you can see everything just kind of swooped, and actually you can actually go back and watch, I said, target that middle blue Keltner right there, it's kind of crazy, I mean exactly to the tick, uh, to the middle blue Keltner that I, that the numbers that I wrote down uh, last night, I believe, was um, middle blue Keltner was 2022 to 2024 and that's it went I think it went exactly to 2021.75 I think so it went exactly to middle blue Keltner right there there was your four hour buy trigger buy trigger right so the good thing about having the buy triggers obviously you can make quite a bit of money on the buy trigger the bad thing is that once you get your move now you're stuck right here in the middle so here's the deal Right here's here's basically what's going to happen. There's two options once you get that trigger here, right? Of course, you can see obviously we're either going to hit higher lows and we're going to make a run up to this resistance Keltner, which is right that I'll write that number down. 2041, 2043 is the resistance Keltner right there. And then back to the downside, we have back we and then we have potential to take this all the way back down to the downside right there. So that's 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 the idea of, of tomorrow, right? So last night you can tell, I mean there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We were massively oversold coming right down to 2000. I even mentioned this in the chat and I mentioned this um, in the in the plan. 2000 was the most important level for us to hold and sure enough it held pretty decently, popped right back up going to the close. I personally traded the TF today I didn't even trade the ES because the TF was was so much better uh, charting was a was a lot better chart, but I still want to make sure that I have a plan for this. I have a plan for both of them, and I usually pick the best chart going into the day. So, whenever you get your moves up, just like we predicted from last night, now we're just stuck here in the middle. It's almost like a chess game, right? And so we we made our move to the upside, and now it's ES's turn either to break and go ahead and make its run back up to the resistance Keltner or we're going to break back down uh, to this probably you know we'll call it 2000 ish level resist support Keltner is 1995 but I want to use that 2000 as the as uh, the entire area so we got 2000 to the downside 2042 ish to the upside to to look for targets and then targets back down Okay, and when we look at the plot chart, you're going to see some opportunities. You're going to absolutely see some pretty good opportunities in this chart for the in, on the plot chart. So check this out. Okay, here we have here we have the five day low at 1983, five day high at 2072. If you remember watching the trade plan from last night, my exact words were: notice how strong these bears were for two days, but they weren't able to take it lower. If you remember me talking about that, so it's no it's no wonder that the bulls were able to get some damage done today, because I noticed it from last night. The bears tried so hard; they had two days of strong, strong selling, but notice right there they failed to take it lower. So that just gave me that that told me right there that these bulls were not done, basically. And if you can watch the plan from last night, and you can see how I kind of set that up for everybody. Right, just, all you got to do is just look. Is this is just a game? It's a game between the bulls and the bears, and you're just trying to figure out who's leading and who's who's winning. That was very very simple to see. Obviously, the bulls were winning because the bears tried so hard for two days and they failed to take it lower than where they took it last Monday. So it's it was it was obviously 
Um, of course, the Bulls were going to be able to get get some get um, gain some traction on uh, Monday. So now that we look at this plot chart, check this out for the opportunities for tomorrow. Okay, but here's the deal: this isn't going to be, in my opinion, I don't think this is going to be super easy. And here's why: we're coming up on Christmas time. So there's probably going to be a lot lower volume than normal. So the chart may not move as smooth as it, as it usually does because a lot of the rich, big money guys, like they're likely to take this week off, right? And so it's, it usually the chart moves a little bit differently when there's not as much participants in the chart. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If you've been trading for a while, hopefully that makes sense. If you haven't, just know that during weeks of holidays, Big money guys usually don't trade. So if we actually go to a daily chart, let's just look at the volume today. Oh, look at that. Look at the volume today. So there's the volume bar. Look at the volume today compared to what it's been. See how much lower it was today? So when you get lower volume days, the chart, sometimes the chart does weird stuff. So I just want to make sure everybody understands the week of Christmas, this chart can do some weird stuff. Plots may not hold like they're supposed to because the big money guys aren't there because the big money guys aren't uh, aren't there to, to, to make the trades that are supposed to happen. Give me one second, I'll try and help here. So, so again, you got to know that volume is definitely going to be lighter, okay? But when we look at the plot chart for tomorrow, there's definitely um, some really, really good, in my opinion, I think TF and DS have some pretty good opportunities here. So notice that we're starting above value. So here are the options. So let's first talk to, on the options, uh, options meaning like um, for the strategies on the downside tomorrow. Okay, so let me first show you, here's the first option right here. Our first option is going to be looking for VA high to hold as support. Okay, so notice we had resistance, 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 and now we broke out above that resistance right there. Well, that has now turned into value area high right there. So that absolutely can be our first spot right there to look for our buy triggers. You got a lot of stuff going on right there that, that's going to tell us that that can likely hold as support. Okay, I, I can't imagine that London may not want to take it right there. So if you want to wake up early, you might have some opportunity to see if London is going to hold as support right there, right? So here's the deal. Basically, this has to come down this has to hit a 15, 30 minute trigger and you enter on a one minute, um, you enter on a one minute uh, higher low right there. That's very, very, very simple. Okay, so that's the first option right there. The second option though, is check this out. If these bears get any, if these bears do any type of um, damage, look at this. We have a lot of stuff telling us that if this chart gets through VA high, if it gets through, here's 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 what I would do on this chart for an 80% rule. So here's the deal if you if you don't know what this means. Price comes outside of value, comes back inside, hits lower highs, lower highs, 80% chance it's going to go down to value area low. So how I would play this tomorrow is here's what I would have this here's what I would have to happen. Look at all of this support from here to here. There's settlement, VA high, Monday's POC, Tuesday's POC, and December 14th's POC. There's a lot of stuff telling me that there could be support. All There could be buyers entering the market right here. But here's the deal. If price gets through these POCs and then hits a lower high right there, another lower high, you can absolutely look where this wants to go. 
you got minus 0.5 deviation, and it's also value area low. It's exactly where the bears took it here. It's exactly where the bears took it here, and it's exactly where the bears took it here. I see no reason why the bears wouldn't want to take it right back to minus 0.5, and that's basically the 2,000 level. Right? That's the level we've been talking about is that 2000. That's where the uh, support Keltner is. There's a lot of stuff telling us that if we get through these POCs here as our last line of defense, we get through these right here, lower high, lower high, enter either here or here, take your profits right there if you want to take a spread trade, at the money binary, whatever you want to do, bigger or out of the money, in the money, whatever. Okay, this absolutely right there is where you would want to go ahead and take your profits. So very, very simple. Buy trigger, buy trigger, potentially buy trigger right there on those POCs. But if we bust through and hold pullback, hold the pullback, absolutely we're making a run right there. Minus 0.5, value area low. Bears took it here, they took it there, they took it there. It's also the support counter. See how you kind of start putting it all together and you pretty much know exactly what to do to the downside. Very, very simple. Shouldn't be any, I mean, this. I do this every single night. This should be so mechanical. You should know exactly what to do. And the more times you watch it, and the more times that you, you should be making notes over here too, on your, either on a, on, a, on a piece of paper or making notes on your charts. So all you have to do is go to drawings and just go to text note and you can just write in whatever the heck you want to write in so that you don't miss these opportunities and you basically know exactly what's going to going to happen VA high can look for buy triggers here and I would just put that uh, right there text note right here if we break through these two POCs look for a lower high on the one minute chart to spread it spread it down to VA low and minus 0.5 so I mean it's just it's as mechanical as that right I mean you should you should know exactly what price goes here you should know exactly what to do Price goes here, you should know exactly what to do. It's basically what I plan out every single night. I have tons of notes on my piece of paper here, and uh, I, I do a lot of times actually mark up my charts as well. But here's the deal. If you don't agree with that, make sure that you you can either piggyback off of what I'm doing or make sure that you're also formulating. If you see something I don't, make sure that you're getting your plans in place so that you can your trading day should be very, very mechanical. There shouldn't be any guessing. It shouldn't be, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? If it goes here, do it. If it goes here, do it. So hopefully you're starting to move yourself to uh, just becomes very similar to, to just riding uh, a bike. Now we can look uh, to the upside. So notice that um, I actually wanted to share this one-hour chart here actually so here's look at this our one hour chart is actually becoming pretty um, in my opinion it's, it's becoming pretty overbought right you look at this one hour chart price has kinda come up there's resistance right there it's it's trying to form a reversal star this is getting oversold sorry overbought and then look what's waiting for us to the downside look what the support Keltner is 2001 so again, that's also giving us even more clues. 2001 is the support Keltner on the one hour chart. See that? That's also value very low, minus 0.5 deviation. It's also the support Keltner on the four hour chart. Lots of stuff going on to tell us that chart is going to go there. And uh, basically, if I were to buy, I can't buy right here. If I buy, price has to come in and then it has to hold right here has to hold for me to even be looking for a buy and honestly I'll be a little nervous trying to buy this because I know price wants to go here so I'll, I'll be a little nervous being a buyer here but if it looks perfect go for it and uh, make sure absolutely if you buy anywhere right here that you take your profits early because at any moment these bears will just dump right down to value your low on you 
Now, to the upside, I kind of like this with the plus 0.5. That's my first sell zone by far. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm not selling here. I'm not selling here. I'm not selling there. If I look to be a seller tomorrow, my first stop, check this out. Resistance, resistance, guess what that has turned into? Has now turned into the plus 0.5 right there. So if I'm going to, London may go ahead and take this just a little bit higher. And if they do, actually, what's going to happen is that one hour chart is now just going to be continued to be oversold even more. So if it actually goes, if London does take it there, you may want to wake up early because then it's really going to look um, really, really overbought. And that one hour chart may be setting up for a really good trigger tomorrow. And you can maybe look at daily strikes right here. But here's the deal. Plus 0.5, in my opinion, has to hold. Like for me to sell, plus 0.5 price has to come here and it has to get back. And it, you can enter right there on a lower high. Like right here, plus 0.5 has to, has to hold for me to enter a sell trade. Here's the deal. If it gets through and then you see a lower high right there, I'm not selling that. No way. Because you're breaking levels where you shouldn't have broke. So resistance, resistance. If you break and then you hit a lower high rate, I'm not selling that. And you shouldn't either. Okay, if you want to lose money, go ahead. But here's the deal. you got to make sure that price is doing exactly what you want it to do. And if it's not, stay away. Go look somewhere else. Because if this busts through the plus 0.5, check out what the 4-hour resistance Keltner is. It is 2, we'll call it 2041 to 2043. So 2041 to 2043 right there. It's also the plus one deviation, and it's also Wednesday's POC. Lots of stuff right there, and check this out. But look at all of that volume right there on the close from Thursday. We had a big close on Thursday. Look at all that volume. It was a big, big dump. And I actually said this on Thursday night's trade plan. Look for that to retrace back up to where that, all of that volume was, and it didn't happen. It actually happened on the TF. Friday, I sold the crap out of the TF right there, okay? On Thursday night's trade plan, I said, look for this to retrace back up to where that volume started. It didn't happen. So now it's going to, if it breaks plus 0.5 and holds the pullback, we got a lot of stuff telling us that it's going to want to run right there. Volume started. There's your volume right there. Okay, resistance Keltner, look at all these POs. You got one, two, three POCs. It's the plus one deviation. Lots of stuff telling us that price is going to run right there. So if I'm going to sell, price has to stay below. I'm not selling there. I'm not selling there. Absolutely not. It's ridiculous. Just expect to lose money. Okay, here's the deal. If price actually makes a run right there, let it go. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it go. Because here's the deal, I'll come in on Wednesday, and more than likely, I should be able to sell this chart on Wednesday. So the higher it goes, the better it'll set it'll set up on Wednesday. If it gets through and you want to maybe try and spread this up there, you can. But if you miss it, don't don't try and force sell trades here. Just wait till Wednesday because it because then the four hour the one hour chart is going to be sickening overbought. And then the four-hour chart is also going to be overbought. It'll be a great, great sell for Wednesday. So don't be, if, if you're nervous, there's no need to force stupid stuff up here. Just wait for tomorrow, basically, okay? So is there any, is there any um, questions on what to do on this chart? You, have, you should know exactly what to do. Every single place where this chart goes tomorrow, you should know exactly what to do. And you should be demoing and you should be recording yourself. Record yourself trading on your demo account so that I can, and then send it to me so that I can watch it. And then we can do one on ones and I can help you get better and better and better every single day. There's zero reason to stay confused. Record yourself and then we'll, we will, if you record yourself trading tomorrow, show me your trade, show me what you're doing. We will then hop on one on ones together, you and me, and uh, we'll replay this day. We'll go back onto the on-demand tool right there, and we will replay this day, and I'll show you what you did wrong, and I'll show you what you did right. There's zero reason to stay confused here. I have everything here for you to succeed. But you gotta, you got to 
you got to show me that that show me what you don't know by recording yourself trading. So hopefully everybody is doing that and sending it to me and then we can do one-on-ones together. So is there any questions uh, on slash ES or is there any questions uh, in general about anything? I am recording this. So sell off of the 1132. No, I wouldn't. What is, oh, 1132. Are you looking at TF? Yeah. Yep. I like it. So if, if so I I absolutely can look to be a seller there uh, on the TF chart. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Um so TF, I'll cover TF tonight, but uh four hour chart, because here's another reason why I like that eleven thirty-two-ish, right? I'm not a, I'm not necessarily I don't necessarily trade exact numbers, right? I mean, I trade areas. Look what the resistance Keltner is, 1134. So that's basically 1132 to 1135-ish, which is our plus 0.5, Thursday's POC, Friday's POC. Yeah, absolutely. If, if chart goes up there, you can look for sell triggers right there. And I'll just cover this quickly because I am going to cover it tonight, obviously. But uh, this can maybe hold as a buy, but um, this could absolutely fill value tomorrow. Look look how many times the bears, bears took it here, the bears did it again, the bears did it again. That, that level has now turned into minus 0.5 in value area low. So if, bear, if bears do any damage and get back inside this sucker, I would absolutely target, uh, look at all these POCs right there. You've got three clusters of volume. The only reason a market exists is to fill orders. Well, on this chart, where are all the orders? They're right here. That's the only reason a market exists. People think, um, well, I mean, I didn't know that until, I mean, obviously when I was a newbie, I didn't realize that. But the only reason, the New York Stock Exchange, Chicago Board of Trade, blah, 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 the only reason it exists, it's a business. The only reason it exists is to fill orders. So you can you can imagine how valuable it is to know where all the orders are. They're right here. There's been so much volume at this level the past uh, week. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to go right there. So basically, though, don't blindly do it. Wait for it to get back inside, lower high, lower high, and then you target those POCs right there. There's three of them. I wouldn't sell right now. No way. I need this to get back inside, lower high, lower high, right there, right there. Take profits on those POCs. It only, the only reason a market exists is to fill orders. Once you figure that out, you can. I love it when we have clusters. The cluster POCs are the best. They usually almost always go. I would say eight out of ten times they're going to go to where the clusters are because that's where all the orders have been the last three days. I like, so if you're going to trade binaries, it's very, very important to make sure that you draw the statement. Okay, and it, and it also depends on the price of the binary. So an example today, okay, here's what, here's some of the binaries that I traded today. And and tell me, and you can also show, and I'll show you why why I liked these statements so much, right? So here's my, one of my first sells today was, was 1127.4. Okay, so I sold the 1127.4 expiring at 11 a.m. So basically, too many people overthink Nadex. If you're going to trade binaries on Nadex, all this game is, is you just got to look at, this is just a statement. That's all this is. It's, this is just yes or no. It's literally all you can, all you have to do here is answer yes or no questions and you'll make a lot of money. Once I figured that out and I stopped like overcomplicating it, all I have to do is figure out, if, is this going to be yes or no by 11 o'clock? That's all I have to do to make money here. It's kind of crazy once you think about it. But too many people overcomplicate this thing. All I have to do is decide whether 1127.4 is going to be true or false by 11 a.m. today. Well, check this out. Look at 1127.4 today. There's 1127.4, and that expired at 11 a.m. 
So price came up to value area high. We can look exactly when I entered the trade. By the way, this was a planned trade the night before. This was planned 12 hours in advance. Okay, there was the plan. Sell right there. It's all for you. Right there. Sell. Sell value area high. I don't even have to think about it. It's just very, very mechanical. It goes right there. I want to pick statements that I'm confident are going to be true or false. So check this out. 11.27.4 is a great, great statement. It's been false all... So Asian session, it stayed false. Um, London session, it stayed false. And it's also above value area high. Price is not exceeding. The last time this sucker went true, it's been several... It barely went true on Friday. Or, sorry, what is today? Yeah, it barely went true on Friday and it came right back down. See that? So let me extend that sucker to the left. Barely went true and it came down. Barely went true right there. So I'm picking a fantastic statement. Okay, so that was very, very easy money. And I also sold another statement the next hour because it came back up. See how it came back up and gave me another shot at it? I then sold the next hour, 11.27.7, expiring at noon. So... And exactly, J JR. I mean, I've been doing this for three years. You got it. Actually, sorry, almost four now. Sorry. Um, but if you you have to continue. I mean, I've I've done you. This is all I do. And by the way, I mean, it's already planned. And it's I didn't have this either. I didn't have somebody showing me exactly where to sell and where to buy uh, the night before either, right? I mean, I had to. I've 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 paid a lot of tuition into the market to learn this. And I've, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, giving my money away. But the, but the losses have, have gotten me to where I am today. So another statement that I sold the next hour, 1127.7, expiring at noon. So it's basically the same area on the chart. Basically, here's 1127.7. Always draw your statement. I sold, let's see what time I sold. 1047, check this out. This was fantastic. I loved this. Watch this. So I sold right here, right around on, on for the 1127.4. I sold at 1015. Look, 1015, I sold VA high. Okay, easy money. And then it, look at this. It came right back up and allowed me to, look, I entered at what time? 1047, right there. Look at 1047. I entered right there on that candle right there. The next candle, Tanksville. So I picked another. I even got a little bit higher. I picked a really, really good statement. Yes, I would have made way more money on a spread. I would have made way more money on at the money. But I like trading really, really safe contracts um, so that I can give a little bit of room for air. So I basically had... Um, I had over, I had over two points of air to the upside before I have to think about stop lossing. So I like having that room of of air. And look at that, that sucker actually filled value all the way to the downside. And so you got to make sure that you're drawing your statements. So 1127.7 expiring at noon. I sold right there. Are we? Is that statement going to be true or false? Uh, I mean, it's going to be false. No brainer. Go get it. Right? You'll never see me trade statements right here. Like, never, ever, ever, ever. It went through it here. It went through it right there. And it went through it again. You'll never see me trade statements right there. You'll always see me trade statements either up here or down here where price does not want to go. And then um, spreads. I usually like spreads for the 80% rules, which... That was fantastic, right? So 80% rule to the downside. Price comes out, gets back inside, 80% chance it goes down to there. That's pretty nuts. I didn't do it, though. I wanted my safe trades. Based on the divide by four guideline, JR, so make sure you watch that video. I'll tag you in it right now. But it's all based on the divide by four guideline. So I had a 15-minute sell trigger. So see my 15-minute chart? 
So I know, see my 15 minute trigger? But so then I know that I can do a trade that lasts about an hour to two hours more based on the divide by four guideline. If I have a one hour trigger, like we're, notice how we're, we're, we're starting to actually form a one hour trigger on slash ES. See how we have, we're almost starting a one hour candle sell trigger. So that means I can pick a trade all the way up to two to three to four hours till expi expiration. Because my one hour chart is overbought, overbought. I can probably go out as far as four hours till expiry. So it's all based on the, on the divide by four guideline. If I see a five minute trigger, I, I, so there's a five minute buy trigger. Right there's a five minute buy trigger. So if I'm trading a five minute chart, then I need to be trading 20 to 40 minute trades. Plain and simple, right? Because divide by four, a 20 minute trade, you should be using five minute charts. There's a five minute trigger, there's a five minute buy trigger, five minute buy trigger, you need to be doing 20 minute trades. If you're using one hour charts, you can be going all the way up to four hour long binaries. It's a it's basically built. I, I share the guidelines so that you are trading the correct time frame for whatever binary you want to trade. So I'll let, uh, there's not a lot of people on, I'll let everybody go. I did have this recorded and I'll post it. Um, uh, of course, I'll trade tomorrow and I'll trade Wednesday. I won't trade Thursday and Friday. And um, comment if you have any questions. I will post a trade plan tonight. So I'll basically redo everything and I'll post the, the trade plan. As you can see, it shouldn't be too difficult, hopefully. But here's the deal. I just shared this at the beginning. Um, look at our volume on our daily chart. We're dropping. And when volume drops that low, a lot of times some weird stuff can happen. Okay? I mean, we've been averaging, you know, we, we've been up in here in the 2 million range. We barely cracked, I mean, we didn't even get close to 1.5 contract, 1.5 million contracts today. We're very, we, we dropped really, really low. That's basically a lot of people aren't trading this week. Most of the big money is gone. And so when you get lower volume like this, you can see some weird stuff. So I just want to prepare you for that, okay? No problem, Robel. Hopefully, hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, but uh, comment if you have any questions. I think tomorrow should be a decent day. I, I'll, I'll trade smaller probably. I don't want to lose money, that's for sure, okay? And uh, comment if you have any questions. Message me, message Ryan Smith. Make please make sure, guys. Honestly, everything is. Share this with you. Everything is great that we offer here, but the best thing that we offer, or that I offer, and I'm willing to spend a lot of time with anybody who's willing to actually do this. Only a couple people have taken advantage of this. But um, if you get in here and step number nine in the trading center, if you actually get in here and record yourself trading every single day and uh, show me your trades, show me what you're doing, show me the statements you're picking, show me your entries, show me um, why you're doing what you're doing so that I can watch you and then we can do one-on-ones together and I can fix you. I was, I think I said this here, but um, no, I didn't say that here, but I would do anything to go back and have somebody help me in the beginning and so I didn't have to struggle as much as I did, right? There was nobody to help me. There's nobody to watch me trade and to, to fix my mistakes. So this is the best thing that we offer here. I'm, I'm willing to help you. do if, As long as you get these, re, record yourself trading. This is the video on how to record yourself and what software to use. And then we'll be doing one-on-one -on -one so that we can, a lot of money to be made here. And there's, It's ridiculous to stay confused. But um, make sure you're recording yourself. Because the, the issue that I have 
is I have everything there for you to succeed, so I don't know what you don't know. That's basically what I'm looking for, is I'm looking to, I'm looking, show me what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis so that I can see what you don't know, and then I can add it, and then we can do some one-on-ones, and I can help you. So, I'll let you guys go.